for your love and thank you for saving Sushin, Xiaoling and everyone here. And Holy Spirit, as we come into your living word this morning, I acknowledge you as the greatest teacher and revealer of truth. I ask that you link through my mind and speak through my mouth and let your words go forth not in my own human wisdom, but in demonstration of your spirit and power that the faith of your people will rest in you and your power. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay, so welcome Kiara, Cambodia, and uh, Nankam, right? Hello. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Through Zoom, right, we can reach out to many people around the world. And today, that's what that, that's what yes, the Bible says. Right? Okay, hi, Nyan Kam. Yeah. Uh, Ying, Ying, <clears throat> Ying Ying not here this morning. I'm so happy, Xiao Ling, to see you. Okay, so what uh we are we welcome uh for those who of you uh who don't know Su Shin, right? We all welcome her first time, all right, coming to feed on. Spiritual milk, <laughs> all right, of, because of yesterday she was born again, yeah, and her life will totally never be the same again. All right, Su Ling, Su Shin, yeah, because God, you got Father now, Heavenly Father, that's the difference. Why our lives will never be the same again. Jesus came, when we believe in him, he connected us back to the Father. How can... You know, if you have, you think on this earth, if you have a different father, your life will be different, right? <laughs> you mean the natural father. Just think for a moment. Yeah. Okay, though we not uh, blame our father or whatever, but sometimes, right, if a different father, well, let's say, for example, uh, our father is rich, uh, father is intelligent, very good, well, everything, oh, okay. But the thing is, it's not possible. Okay, because all of us were born in sin. So just like we were not perfect, also we could not be the perfect father or mother to our children. But that wish that if we have the best father in this world, everything also got one. We don't have to live a moment in worry anymore, right? <laughs> so that's what happened when you got born again. Born again, right? Meaning that you have a father, a heavenly father. So when Jesus came to this earth 2,000 years ago, right, before he went to the cross, he was always telling them, I come to show you the Father, all right? That you know, the, in the world, we worry about so many things. He told the disciples and those listening to him. But he said, those are the things we worry about. Money, food, clothing are the things that unbelievers think about. But in Matthew 6, 30, 33, he says what? <clears throat> Your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. And he wants to take care of you. See, if there's anything you don't know about, you know, you, you, about Christianity or Jesus, or just know that through uh, Jesus Christ, you have a uh, heavenly Father. And today, what we are learning or through the scriptures, through the Bible, is knowing about this daddy God. All right? Through the Hebrew understanding of Hebrew uh, letters. Okay? So the Bible is God's manual. It's instructions. Everything for us, revelation of what Jesus, of, of, of our whole life, of this whole universe, of God, who God is. And who are we humans? And who are we new creation? All right, everything is revealed there. Okay? And once your eyes are open, you will begin to live that supernatural life, that life of peace and joy with no worries in Christ because that's actually who we are. Okay, so the Bible is written. <clears throat> divided into two sections, which is the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay, testament that means it's a, a record, right, of uh, what happened from the day of creation, okay, until the last chapter written by Malachi, a prophet, okay, all the prophets of God. That's the time 
the, the, the Old Testament and before the coming of Jesus, correct? And the Old Testament talk about, already prophesied to about Jesus coming. And the New Testament is a record of the writings that are inspired by God and Holy Spirit of, the, of Jesus Christ's life and the new covenant that we call today, which is uh, for the new creation, those who are born again, you and me, the new creation in Christ. The Bible, Old Testament, was written in Hebrew. Okay, languages, right? And God speaks Hebrew, <laughs> main language. But today he gives us a new tongue in Christ. Okay, so but all what we have in the Bible today are translations. Okay, because most of us are don't know Hebrew or Greek. The New Testament is Greek. What we have is translation, either English, Chinese, can Khmer, or even Myanmar, right? So that everyone can understand. But the original writing is in Old Testament Hebrew, New Testament Greek. And studying these letters will help us to understand more Okay, because once translated already, because different languages has uh, different, uh, different, uh, different, all right? Like for English, we want to describe, we want to say love, whether it's uh, just, you know, you, you say, I love to eat. <laughs> you also use the word love. I love my father or my brother. You also use the word love. I love my husband. Also, you use the word love. And God loves me. We also use the word love. Only one word to express, to, to, to want to say that. But is it the same kind of love? <laughs> when you say, I love God, or I love uh, a food, and I love this cat, and I love my brother or sister, or I love my husband or wife. Different. Okay, so we have to add in other words to, this, to really fully express the word love in English. But in Hebrew or in Greek, okay, it's different, right? They are more rich. They have more words to uh, express, okay? So that's why we go back into uh, the, the Hebrew. Right now, we are doing Hebrew first, okay, to understand how God created this world and the meanings and the power and energies in the Hebrew letters. So. Letters form words. Okay, where does your word come from? It comes from letters, right? Even in English, we have to say uh what? Okay, just say the word love. All right, the word love comes from four letters: L O V E. So letters form words. But our English and a lot of our other language doesn't have any power inside it by itself. But for Hebrew letters, different because those originate from God. And uh, we have been studying a bit, all right, how God, even in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, just by when they say God created this world and He said, Let there be light, there was light in the Hebrew letters. He just said, Yeah, He all and light appeared. Yeah, He is God. All right, let there be light. So, you can, for those who just join in, you can also access to the recordings, yeah, which uh, uh, has been already done up. Uh, like for Sushin, can come into our WhatsApp group, all right, and access into those earlier uh, teachings on the Hebrew alphabets. They're all together, 22 Hebrew alphabets. But what we are learning is just not another language. First, it is God's language and is the most powerful. Okay, every single letter has meaning and has power to change our lives. Just like when he said, Yeah, he all, let there be light. There was no light. He didn't, you know, do anything other than say the word light. And the word light is made up of certain letters of the Hebrew letters. So when that Hebrew letters, that word was spoken out of from God's mouth, the Holy Spirit came. The energy and power cause the light to manifest. This is how it works. Right? Where did the power come from? From the letters in the words, 
from the mouth of God spoken. Okay, so as we go into the letters, yeah, you will see more and more how powerful is God's word. So even though some who don't know Hebrew, right, but they believe in God's word, okay, and they just spoke by faith, just believing, okay, this is what God say, God say, in my name, you shall cast out demons, and they say, devil, get out in Jesus' name, it, it, the devil also leave, okay, but if you have the understanding, you have the confidence to know how powerful your God is, and even more so, how powerful his word is, all right, and why now you can have his word, and God gave us the power of attorney <laughs> to use his word as if it is ours when we take it, put it into our heart and speak it out. Okay, so today we go into the, 20, uh, the 11th letter. Okay, so far... Uh, we do session by session. There are altogether 22 alphabets in the Hebrew uh, alphabets or letters. And we have done 10. Yeah, we have done 10. It means at 10 sessions. So as I said, it's recorded. So if you have missed it, you know, take some time to listen to it so that you can also catch up. All right. And Sunday, it will be all the revelations of who God is through the Hebrew letters. So the 11th letter, last week we learned the letter Yud, all right, which is the hand of God, the number 10. So Hebrew is very different from all our languages. A little bit in writing form and reading form similar to Chinese, which is you read from right to left. Okay, So for English and all that, we read from left to right. So that is uh, one of the similarities. And also pictorial form, a little bit similar to Chinese as well. One whole Mandarin character is made up of different characters, right? And same Hebrew, you have the meaning in the in the letter itself. There's a meaning in the word, okay? That has the same sound, also has a meaning in the picture form, okay? The letters uh, look like pictures. In the shape of the Hebrew alphabet, there's meaning there, all right? And in the first occurrence of that letter in the Bible, for a word in the Bible will give us more revelation and understanding, okay, of that, uh, uh, of that letter. And uh, for, for Sushin, uh, you know, to, to know, it's, I'm not a Hebrew scholar, <laughs> okay? So my gifting is more of teaching and the prophetic, all right, that God has put on me. But the, lately, in the past few months, the Holy Spirit led me to go and study Hebrew letters. So uh, I studied and put it from here and there. Today, thank God for, uh, what you call this, internet, oh, no, not internet, uh, the, the access all right, to a lot of teachings and uh, rabbis or scholars, teachers who are not here in Malaysia, but we can access to them. And from there, plus the Holy Spirit, okay? So Shane, you'll be very excited to receive Holy Spirit, all right? He can speak to us. The word is Jesus speaking to us, all right? The word is Jesus became word. That means the word is uh, the Bible, God's word, all right? And then you have the Holy Spirit. When he be baptized with the Holy Spirit, he will lead you, direct you, okay, where, where, where to go, all those things that are not written in the word, okay? So from there, so as, as, as we study each letter, it's not fully comprehensive, as in that's all it means, okay? There's so much more, and also, you know, uh, one or two hours cannot study everything. So what we have is at least some revelation or understanding of certain letters, and as we go along, all right, there will be more and more and more added on. So maybe today you see the letter uh, bat. All you can think of is the picture bat that thinks the second letter. Uh, oh, it's a 10. And then you forget the rest. Okay, never mind. As we go along, okay, you will begin to remember 
as a Holy Spirit help you to have more understanding. And all this understanding and teaching is not just for the head. Oh, I learned Hebrew already. <laughs> I'm very clever in Hebrew. No, huh? it's for the transformation of the heart. All right, towards who God is, our creator, how powerful he is. Just by three words, yeah, he all, he created light and so forth. See how powerful is the God living inside you, right? Sushin, Xiaoling, Jesus inside you is so, so powerful, okay? Yeah, okay, let's go into the word today, which is the 11th letter, uh, Hebrew alphabet, and it's called Ka. Okay, so the, the spellings may be a little bit different, okay, because in the Hebrew letters, you have block print, manual print, cursive. And they may look a little bit different here and there. Revealed in Psalms 119. So Psalms is one book in the Bible okay, that uh, written mainly with the other authors there uh, by King David. As he expresses himself to God, he was called a man after God's own heart. Yeah? And the Holy Spirit gave him the revelations of these Hebrew alphabets. These people are all Jews. Yeah, I forgot to tell you, right? So in the world, there are three groups of people. There are Jews, okay? So you will see, uh, uh, all of you know that there is a, a country called Israel in the, world, in the world's map today, all right? And that's where all the fighting is going on. <laughs> but they are, everyone will also know that the people in Israel are called Jews or Israelites in the Bible. And they are very brilliant people. And the Bible tells us, it's like God's manual, that God chose this group of people, this nation, this group of people to be to declare his power, his glory for the other nations of the world to see that there is a God so powerful. So you see, when God choose us, it's not that he wants to take from us something. He actually wants to bless us so that the whole world outside who don't know him will acknowledge that there is a God and he is a good one, not a bad one. All right? He doesn't want to kill us or destroy us or make us poor. All right? So as we go along, we'll understand. And that's why he chose this nation, the Jews or Israel, to uh, where they had this Hebrew language, or they are known as Hebrews, to display God. So whoever is not a Jew is called a Gentile in the Bible. So we were all Gentiles, all right? Unless you were born uh, in this earth from Jewish blood, okay? So if none of us have Jewish blood, then we were all called Gentiles. Then there's a third group, which is the new creation, all right? All of you here this morning are in this third group because we are not Jew by blood, by physical, we are not Gentile anymore because we have received Jesus Christ. This is the new creation or the church. This is the body of Christ. So church is not a building. Church are your, the people, all right, who have been born again. You and me are the church, okay? So this group is called, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the new creation. Whoever is in Christ, it's a new creation. All things are passed away. All things have become new. So we are neither Jew nor Gentile. We are new creation in Christ Jesus. So this new creation, all right, in Christ, but our God is still the God of the Jews. <laughs> okay? It's still the beginning, how he started in this world was as the God of the Jewish nation. And they, they, they were chosen by God for covenant. God made a covenant or a promise, an agreement to bless Abraham, the father of the Jewish people, they call him, and also the Arabs, they also call him. So there's a story there because of the two lines, descendants. But what happened is, he got all the blessings, the covenant the Jews had. They were chosen. 
not because they were great or big, eh? they were small, but God just loved them. So the rest of the world have no covenant, the Gentiles have no promises. But God is a God of grace. All right. He still loves us all. In fact, everyone spiritually already died because of uh, uh, sin. So God sent Jesus to die on the cross for everyone, including the Jews, but more so for the Gentiles, for you and me, who had no covenant, no promise, no hope, nothing. This is called grace. All right, when Jesus came, if grace means we don't deserve it. It's like the servant in the house, the child and your, your, your own son and the servant. The inheritance can only go to the son, not the servant, because he is not part of the bloodline. But because if your master is very good, you say, okay, ah, you know, I still give to the servant. That's called grace. He don't, she don't deserve it not born. Okay, So we were not chosen in the beginning, not Jew, but today, because of God's grace, a favor on those who don't deserve it, we come to become, he made us sons and daughters of God. And therefore, because you're born again, you become son, okay? So we didn't, uh, that's why we have, when you receive Jesus, it's called born again. It's not called uh, just Christian. It's called you're born, all right? So you become a son, you become a daughter. <laughs> Remember, of the creator of this whole universe became your daddy God. Okay, so that is the third group that we are in. And if today a Jew <clears throat> will receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior too, they will also be part of this new creation. The only thing is they have a heritage in their natural uh, bloodline. Okay, so this letter, Kaf, is the 11th letter. So every letter has also a numerical value in the uh, Hebrew is called Gematria, which, which is the relationship between words and numbers and letters. Okay, so, uh, words to, to numbers. So everything in the Bible has got meaning, right? Because everything in God is, has meaning and purpose. The letter calf is the 11th letter of the Aleph back. So starting from this calf, you will see the numerical value change a bit. So from the first to the 10, it's uh, follow exactly 10. But from the 11th letter onwards, it's the 11th letter, but it has a gematria or numerical value of 20. So the pictograph for calf looks like a palm of a hand. So last week we learned the 10th letter, which is Yud, the smallest letter in the whole 22 alphabets, the tiniest letter, but it's the beginning of the name of God. God's name is made of four letters, Yud, He, Vav, He. Okay, so we have done these letters, right? But we can, we will get more revelation as we go along, more understanding, okay? So Kav, yes, that the, the Yud, Y-O-D, all right, it's yud is one letter, y o d is a word for hand. See, that's how Hebrew is. I think like Chinese is all okay. A bit, right? You have the letter and you have the word. Okay, so we have the same sound. So now yud stands for one of the meaning or the main meaning is the hand of God. Okay, that created this whole universe, that created you and me, has power, authority. Hand speaks of authority, right? You use your hand to work, you use the, we call the right hand man, right? We always talk about the right hand. So that is the you. But it's the smallest, it's the little that holds a lot. Okay, it may be small, but it's super powerful. That, that little you that was last week power to create okay so now calf is the palm okay the palm uh it looks like the palm looks like the palm of a hand you can see there in the picture whereas the classical hebrew constructed a bent line that appears somewhat like a crown it also have 
uh, the look of a crown and on the head of a prostrating king that means lying down okay a crown on a king who is lying down so this crown is lying down all right <clears throat> okay in jewish uh, mysticism the two letters the word car are the initial letters of two hebrew words so remember we can also learn from the first appearance of the letter in the uh, in the first words in the bible and it starts the let the word koak hebrew word and koel koak is potential koel koel is actual suggesting that calf enables the latent power of the spiritual the potential to be made actual in the physical so what we are learning all is about the spiritual realm or heaven's realm okay god's realm and god's realm the power all that comes out is all through letters hebrew letters that he spoke because he spoke this world into being you can read in genesis all right god spoke let there be light and there was light and so forth okay all through speaking so that means the words of god is so powerful all right it has potential koak that is the calf all right in this word okay let's see to bring into what okay, you cannot see into the physical realm to manifest so the literal meaning of calf is palm which is considered the location where potential of the youth so you have the hand and then the palm is actualized or the gematria for the word youth is also the same as the letter calf so each letter in the hebrew alphabet has a gematria or a numerical value so if hebrew reads from right to left right the yod is actually uh 10 made up of a, 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 a valve six and a dale four so it's 20. okay same as the gematria for calf for this reason the jews okay bless children with palms facing them and we envision God as having his palm over us. For this image suggests the calling forth of the latent power of the spirit within for manifestation in the physical world. See, all this is the rabbis, all right, the, the, the Jewish scholars who wrote some of this. They understand they are Jews. So they know the meaning of whatever they are doing. Okay, for non Jews, we don't know. But we just do it from the translation all right okay lay hands and so forth but today now learning the hebrew we now understand why the jews do a lot of things okay it's all from the manual <laughs> from the torah from god's instructions okay so when they bless the children they don't you will read from in the old testament on that how they bless they will lay hands on the children right open the whole hand with the palm put on the head ah so why because there's meaning it is the potential right that is that the latent power of the spirit they all know they are spirit being because they believe in their god okay our god today is the god of the jews okay same god god didn't change <laughs> the god of new covenant jesus is you yahweh you hey wow hey god is inside so it's he come from god right jesus is the son of god so we study a bit and we will study more okay because one time you may all forget okay so until it's so deep inside you you will have that awe of god and also knowing that how powerful is your god each one of you here <clears throat> so that is a when we put the palm out and they bless their children Okay, there is a latent power inside their spirit through the palm for the manifestation of those words they spoke. Remember, uh, Jacob blessed their children and so forth. How did they bless? They spoke and they lay hands. Okay, to manifest in their lives. So why, uh, who is that? Uh, Jacob, all right, trick, trick the 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 father to get that blessing whereas here 
sometimes you see believers not even interested in God's blessing. <laughs> don't know anything, don't really bother. Right? But for the Jews, he even, Jacob went all the way. He even tricked the brother over a, a food, physical food, not to, to get the firstborn blessing from the father. And what is that? Just words. Ah, to us, it's all just words only. If your daddy call you, come, 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 I want to bless you. You say, if you give me a bank account, I, I will come. Ah. <laughs> give me 10,000. Uh, I want to see the physical. See, we are so into the physical realm. Oh, you give me a car. Okay, I will come and say hi, hi to you. But you say, I just want to come. I want you to come. I want to lay my hands on you. I want to bless you with words. So you say, oh, yeah, that one, no need. Lah. <laughs> right? I want the physical one. But to the Jews, all right, to God, it starts with the words of God. When you receive that word and that blessing, that is the potential, the cup, to manifest. It's, that's why it is those words are what we call in Deuteronomy, what God said in Deuteronomy 8.18, the power to make wealth, the power to get wealth, the power to produce wealth. The Jews know it. So today, the new creation need to know also, okay? So don't treasure just the physical. The spiritual first, the words of God, the blessings are in those words, okay? So even if we are receiving in English language, it doesn't matter. But as long as we understand what it means and the value of the words of God today, you don't go for a uh, Rolls Royce, this is more powerful than a Rolls Royce. <laughs> okay, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. God is speaking to the Jews, to the children of Israel. And today we are children of Abraham by faith. And whole Bible, New Testament, Old Testament, uh, and the Torah, uh, remember, instructions for our lives to live the abundant life that God has for us. And we need to understand one of the most powerful, important thing is the word. The word spoken by God and the man of God or the woman of God, the people, the, the servants of the Lord over our lives is very, very powerful. All right. He that gives to thee, because in the previous verses here, it's all about the blessings of God. I will give you houses that you did not build, land, milk, or honey, a land filled with the promised land, right, of milk and honey and so forth. And then him coming to verse 18. 8, 18. Remember, the Lord here is the word Yahweh. yud he vav he God is El. El Shaddai. Right? So, Almighty. Lord Yahweh, the name of God, who is the one over everything. I am that I am. And he gives you the power to get wealth. You may win a lottery, one million, and next few days or one month or one year finish with it. Actually, now very fast can finish with it. <laughs> right? Just buy something and it's gone. And then that's it. But the power to get wealth or to make wealth is something inherent. It's a potential, okay? That can continue in the rest of your life. The wisdom there, power, okay, I'll show you what it is. That he may establish his covenant unto his fathers. Okay, so the word power that has been translated power to English is the Hebrew word koak. And you can see the Hebrew letters there. All right, it starts with the kaf. Kaf is like that with the open, open left-hand side. It means the force, the strength, of God, the power and the might of God, not man. Okay? Strength to produce the wealth of the soil, the wealth from this earth. Remember, the, the potential in the spirit for, to manifest from this earth in the physical realm. It's like a, a reptile, okay, which is the chameleon that can change immediately, change color. Isn't it? If you know what is this lizard, it's very powerful. It was that power like, like a chameleon to change a situation from this to that. 
from sick to healthy, from poor or lack to wealthy or this one. First, it starts from that revelation of the word. Okay, for, to manifest from the like the the bread, Jesus, the miracle of the five loaves and ten uh, two fishes. From only these two or three loaves, is it five? I always mix up it. <laughs> How many loaves? Okay, but this a uh, little boy's lunch to feed five thousand and more people. This is the power. Okay, this is the hope up and all the miracles that happen in the Old Testament throughout the whole Bible, from sick, from dead, became alive, right? From uh, nothing become something. This is the Koa, okay? It starts with the letter C. Uh, C, but I mean, it's the uh, letter Ka. It's a force to remember. All, remember, generally, all the alphabets got supernatural power and force. You will always want to speak God's word. <laughs> right? As we study this, you will not want to miss out the most powerful weapon that God has given us. The word. That's why tongues is a spiritual language. It's also words. They are speaking. Only that one we don't know. Right? But the rest, if you know God's word, you speak God's word, that you, know, you have the sword of the spirit. We have the physical sword. If you, you, you don't have muscle, you also can't even carry that sword to kill an enemy. But you have the sword of the spirit. All you need to do is to speak, whether it's in Jesus' name. Why? People, uh, all the testimonies of uh, people, uh, God's children who were going to be raped or killed, and they said in Jesus' name, and the, the, the rapist or the killer and all that, just move away, cannot harm God's children. But they don't keep quiet. They have to say out in Jesus' name. That's the power of Jesus' name. So there's power in this koa, all right? Calf is a picture of a curved hand as in blessing that you met above, okay? To, to bless. So the hand is to bless. A very beautiful, actually all the letters are amazing. Head is pronounced with a K, a fence, something fenced in. But this one is the open to release out the potential. Okay, so of power inside. So we see God's word as we meditate and as we confess those blessings of God, words of God over our life. You receive the potential, the power, the potential to make well. The wisdom, the understanding, that's what uh, Solomon asked for. He doesn't want just the material thing first. He wants wisdom and understanding. And God said, yes, with wisdom and understanding, you will also get the physical wealth. So another word that starts with ka is kala. In the Hebrew, it's for bright. The word for bright is kala. And this is Hebrew spelling with the a uh, calf, a lament, and a uh, hay. Calf is a picture of a hand curve as when placed on someone's shoulder in blessing. It is literally a picture of the laying on of hands. Lament is a picture of the ox or goat and means learning. It has a lot to do with learning and teaching as God as our teacher. He, hay is a picture of an open window. And means grace as well. So this is just very uh, uh, summarized meaning. Okay. So as you learn each letter, you know that there's much, much more. But this is like main meaning, something like that. After all, that which that is what God pours out of his open windows of heaven, grace. So hey, I mean grace, you also know it means the spirit of God as well, and the breath or the wind of God. Then it's a little get there for God to open and pour out. All right, so today we have behind us this window and we have the sky, right? Heavenly for God to pour out what? Grace. We all don't deserve <laughs> God's blessing, but he give it to us. So these three letters form the word right of Kala, okay? With the car, 
the open hand. So we are the bride of Christ as well today. See, God so gracious to pour out, right? And we are learning. Today, I'm visited here to learn, right? To learn about Him. The word, the bride and the bridegroom. So it is also, it's a, the picture, both bride and bridegroom start with the letter Ka. So whether in the physical or in spiritual, there is a wonderful meaning here. The power to get wealth, the potential, there's a calf inside. In the word for groom, you'll find the letter He. It's a new beginning. And the letter calf in bright. So put the calf together with the head is the same word for power. All right? Power, just now we read, koa is one calf and with a letter head. So it actually is the power where of the marriage. The bride and the groom together is very powerful. Okay, first it resembles Jesus Christ as our uh, groom and we as the bride of Christ. See how powerful Jesus together with us, he is the head, we are the body, right? And another in the Hebrew, bride and groom is the calf and the head. A new life, new, new dimension of life altogether open to us by the groom, Jesus. Okay, and also in the physical marriage, it also speaks the same for the Jewish people. Eh? Although it may not happen, but it is what is meant to happen in a marriage joined by God. Okay, that together they will be able to create wealth. Wealth is not just physical, every area of life. Right? You're wealthy in your your health as well. It's called wealthy. Your health finances, no more lacking. Okay, so with Christ, all right, if we are even not married or if you are maybe married to unbeliever or not yet, you know, flowing in the same, doesn't matter. Most important is your spiritual marriage to the Lord. Okay, that we can, together with Christ, with the word, with Jesus, we have the new beginning, the letter head. And now the calf, the grace of God pouring out in our lives. Okay, another word that starts with the letter calf is the word uh, kita, okay? which is the word in Hebrew for crown. The word kita means a crown. Okay, so you can see that. So it's made of a uh, Kita starts with a calf. Anyone knows what's the other letter? <laughs> Dalet. Dalet? He Dalet. Is it Dalet? Uh, head and then Dalet. Calf, head, Dalet. Ah, head and then Dalet, correct. Okay, so that's the crown. Calf, right? Okay, let's learn more. In the Jewish tradition, there are four crowns that are given to the Jewish people. So for the Jewish people, they have four crowns. Kita Torah, which is the crown of Torah, and also the crown used to adorn the Torah scroll in the synagogue. Okay, so you will see their Torah. I didn't show you the picture. It's uh, like, you know, there's a crown at the side there, at the top. Okay, they roll up together. Torah is the instruction, God's instructions, right? Kita Kahuna, the crown of the priesthood, those priests of God. Kita Malikut, the crown of the kingdom. Kita Shem or Tor, the crown of a good name. So we studied the name Tet, the letter Tet, that begins the letter Tor, which is pure goodness of God. So this goodness is not man's goodness. All right, man's goodness still got conditions, still got limit. But God's goodness, remember we learned the talk, like the dew. Every morning, the faithfulness, the goodness of God, the dew will still come. And we need dew all right, for the plants to grow and all that. So God's goodness is actually still on both the Jews, the Gentiles, the whole human race. All right, it's just waiting for, for us to go and reach out. All right. Uh, Abigail went out to reach out for, to Sushing, yeah, for each, each one of you and Hannah and so forth, all of you, right? To reach out to someone who don't know the goodness of God. 
<laughs> right? There is no condition, see, upon the person, but he loves us continuously. So for the Jews or the Hebrews, according to the sages, a good name is the best crown of all, since it is foundational to all other crowns. So you will read in Proverbs and all that. A good name is better than oil, isn't it? Very, your reputation, a good name, rather than, you know, you have everything but then a bad name. <laughs> they hear your name, wow, somebody mentioned, wow, this guy very rich, huh? what's the name? Huh? Oh, yo, this person, huh? he's very rich, huh? but very terrible. <laughs> okay, so to the Jews, a good name is very important. It's like a crown, okay, on them, on them, on them. According to the sages, the crown of Torah, was given at Sinai when all Israel said, Naish, Bishma, we will do and we will obey in response to the giving of the Ten Commandments. After the golden calf incident, however, the crowns of the priesthood and the kingdom were said to have been taken away from the Israelites through, of, uh, though, of course, the Levites were later commissioned as priests and Davidic line selected as kings. What remains for the regular Jew is to wear the crown of Torah and the crown of a good name. The gematria for calf is 20. 20 can divide, be divided into 10 and 10. Yeah, correct? <laughs> Simple mathematics. The first 10 represents the 10 utterances with, with which God created the world. This one is written by a, uh, a rabbi. That's why they, they don't put the G-O-D there. The second 10 represents the 10 commandments. So together they become a calf. In number seven, it states, this is just for you to have some knowledge, all right, and understanding of where this, uh, uh, this cow. 10 and 10 is the cow. Number 780, one golden spoon and 10 shekels full of incense. Number seven, actually, is very interesting. Now we are learning Hebrew, right? If you go and read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, you no longer feel scared of all the, uh, the things that they are doing there. Here, number seven is about all the offerings that the God, that the people of God in Moses' time were bringing into the temple. It's amazing. One by one, they say this person by what name were bringing these offerings. Da, 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 a lot into the temple, into the house of God. And then after that, a few uh, chapters, a few verses. Then after that, the next person's name appear. Numbers, ma. That's why it's called numbers. Different, different people. And what were they doing? They were bringing all, all listed out, you know. <laughs> they, they list out all their offerings. And then in this verse, everyone also brought this one. One golden spoon and ten shekels. So spoon is also the letter ka, or rather has the same word. It's the meaning, another meaning of ka and ten. So ten plus ten equals twenty. So ka, all right, the material. So if you take the word 20 in Hebrew and add up his letters. So 20 in Hebrew is those letters. Ah, okay. And each letter got gematria, right? So after calf, the gematria will change already. It will not follow according to the, uh, the, the, the sequence of the numbers. Okay. So you will arrive at 620. This is just so amazing how God and his word. Ayin. Okay, is the, the, the letter equals 70? So there's an ayin there. It starts, all right? This uh, 20, all right? In the Hebrew, uh, not in English. It's 70, gamatria. I think we haven't come to ayin yet. Shin is a gamatria of 300. So when we come to that, you'll understand more. Resh is 200. Yud is 10. Okay, you have done. Mem is 40. So it actually comes to 620 which is the number of the gamatria for Kisa, the crown. So the crown has the value of 620. Ta, ta, resh. If you don't, uh, you can listen again and study again. I put it for you also that those of you who want to know more and understand more and get more excitement of how wonderful the God put the whole Bible together, the meaning of the whole Bible is, is doesn't miss out any single thing. So crown 
and the gematria of 20 is the same. So when we think of car, we also can think of crown. All right. Kisa, the blessing of crown. All right. Kesa means crown, the ornament placed on the head of a king. Kesa also reminds us of the 620 letters in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Praise God for Google or whatever today, right? You don't have to open, uh, go and buy the big, big concordance and all that and study for all the small prints, right? But the only thing is, be careful if you want to Google yourself. There are some that is a bit of a not accurate also got. That's why I have to sit down and select, all right? Which is more correct and which is not. Sometimes they give the verse also wrong verse, okay? So uh, if, if you do want to go, go and Google, you can, but just be careful. So for, for what I give you is I've selected from different, different ones. Check through the verse. Each verse they put there, I check through first. <laughs> because even sometimes the speaker talk, uh, they quote a verse, then I check, hey, wrong verse. Uh. Maybe not their fault, uh, you know. Sometimes I may also say the, the wrong text. Okay, so God crowned the Jewish nation by giving them the Torah. See, I told you, right? The Jews were special. Right, God's chosen. So they had a crown. What was their crown? The Torah. The, the Gentiles don't have. Right? They don't know how to live, how to protect themselves. Okay, There were moral, called, so-called laws or instructions. And there were uh, physical health, what they call health one, uh, what, what to eat, what not to eat. They had all that. That's so why today the Muslims also have, right? Yeah. Without Christ that time, God have to give the Torah. Even today, all right, it's just different type of uh, instructions to keep healthy. Remember the Jews, when God took them from Egypt by Moses out to the promised land, the Bible recorded that none of them, they were, were lame or feeble. There was none sick among them. And there was about 2.5 million of them. There were old people. So when you watch the movie one in the Hollywood, you have the old people using uh, walking stick la, <laughs> and all that, and then like sick like that. Don't have. Read the Bible. See, the Bible says none of them were feeble and they were rich because God caused the Egyptians to give to the Israelites before they go out all their silver, their gold and all that. God can do, okay? So, that's why be careful when you watch all those things, not fully accurate. And it gives you a wrong picture of who our God is. Okay, so read the word first. Then when you read the word first and you look at the uh, YouTube and all that, you will know, oh, this one not accurate. But if you look at YouTube first, before looking at the word first, <laughs> you will be a bit, you get a wrong misinterpretation interpretation of God. And one little wrong misinterpretation can very badly affect your life, right? Isn't it? Even this case, if you saw all oh, the people were weak coming out, of, you will think that you know God cannot the uh, the all those uh, Torah given to them doesn't work. They came out poor and weak. Wrong understanding of God because of always watch, follow YouTube. <laughs> Nothing wrong, okay? But you follow, follow, follow. If it's not accurate, that's how it looks good but may not be good, right? One wrong interpretation God can affect your life badly, right? That's why when uh, Moses strike the rock two times, when God tell him to just strike one time for the water to be given to the Jewish people, that caused him not to go. He misrepresented God, that God is angry with his people. Right? So when you see all these shows, be careful. God is not angry with men. Sometimes they portray a God so angry. He's not. He's angry with sin. Right? He has to punish sin because he's a just God. But he always provides and still loves the people with grace and mercy. That's why he provided manna from heaven. Okay? So God crowned the Jewish nation. So to have God's commandments is such a delight. Now, even we are a new covenant, we don't have to obey to be blessed. But to receive, to be, to have the Bible, to, to know how God 
you know, gave all these instructions and directions for our lives, even whether it's area of tithing, offerings. You see the joy that the Old Testament people bringing their offerings unto the Lord, you will just bow down before God, sometimes in shame maybe. <laughs> you know, for us to give a little bit, we feel so difficult. But for the Jews, it was their joy and delight because they know who their God is and God is going to multiply and bless them without you know, without a uh, constraint. That is who their God is. And when you read through again, it's so amazing. It's like as if they serve a living God and ours is <laughs> just on the table, right? But today, God's grace brings us to realize your God is the God of the Jews. So go read again without fear. You know, God doesn't want us to do anything by force, you know, by compunction anymore. But to see how God took care of the Jewish nation, right, through his uh, commandments or uh, Torah, this was a crown. It's like receiving a crown. Can you imagine receiving teaching? It's like receiving a crown. Ah, see that? When you receive teachings, God's Torah, God's revelations, whether new or Although the Old Covenant, and we don't fully understand the Old Covenant, okay? So it's not the Torah as the law that you have to follow in order to be blessed. Right? But there's so much more meaning inside it. And it's a crown. So you don't want teaching or not. Torah. The crown. You're receiving crown. For the Jews, they love the Torah. It's to them, it's a crown. And I actually shared one time what the Torah Hebrew letters are. We will go through again because by now you've probably forgotten all. <laughs> okay, the, there's a hay inside, there's a cat, everything. And it came, became the Jewish Jews' rising of the 613 commandments and the rabbinic laws, which total 620. Everything is so precise and so accurate. Significantly, the first letter of Kesa or crown is Ka. So, in Kabbalah, which is the Jewish uh, tradition or that, of Kesa, or, or their, their writings, their wisdom, represents a level, this is super interesting, okay? Mm. When I read this, wow, it may be a, take a bit long, but then get this. Uh, the a level that is beyond intellect, okay? The Kesa or the crown with the calf, right? It's placed on top, on top of the head. Of course, our head is the vessel that carries the brain, the seat of intellect and thought. So we have this soul area that has the head, the brain inside. So it's all your intellect, huh? especially more so in uh, Elijah. <laughs> okay, nothing wrong with intellect, okay? God is very intelligent. So don't think God is a bit, uh, you know, not intelligent. Okay, but that's where it is. Thinking and your intellect. But the crown, all right, the Torah rests upon the head. Okay, God's crown, which is the instructions of God. And it is beyond thought. That means without the crown, without God's instructions, God's word, what we have is just our own intellect and our own thinking and our own thoughts. But when God places his Torah, his instructions, his word, like a crown upon our head, because we also receive uh, through the head also. Not that we totally don't use this head to understand. But it surpasses the normal intellect. What is greater than intellect? Desire. Okay? Desire is greater than intellect. And here he gives us an example. This rabbi. In Hebrew, this is called razon. Desire. Okay? Desire is a mighty force inviting us to explore possibilities that rationality would show to be wrong or difficult. So even a person may be not very, no have PhD, didn't study and all that, correct? So the intellect part is not fully very well developed, you will say that's not a professor or you know didn't study up to very high grades. But the person has desire. That's why the world motivation tap on this. Right, to help people to so-called be more successful. They tap on their desire. And this is also the work of the Satan in the Garden of Eden. That's how he caught hold of Eve. Desire. 
the devil showed to Eve, this fruit so nice, huh? <laughs> so delicious. She never used brain already, okay? She was going through, it bypassed the brain and go, the devil entered the, what is more powerful than the brain? It's the desire of the human heart, okay? To crave for this delicious, the more they describe to you. So motivation out there, describe, wow, you will become very rich, blah, 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 until then you will have everything you want and so forth. Then the desire come out already. And then you want uh, what, what, what car, Rolls Royce, or Mercedes, whatever is yours. So that they appeal to your desire. So this is what happened. So you have the imitation, the devil used, and you have the real. What we have is the real from God. Okay, so don't let our desire go saying it, you know, to the world. In Hebrew, so desire is a mighty force. Okay, inviting us to explore possibilities that rationality would show to be wrong. If you reason it out, hey, I cannot, like, I cannot do it, like, you know. But if you more and more, you say, this fruit is very nice. Look at it, so juicy, so red, so, mm, and that's where it fell, right? and took the fruit that God forbade not to take. So for example, you would like to become successful in a certain occupation. This is not written by me. Eh? This is written by the, the rabbi. Even when you may have failed every class in school, you can persevere and succeed if you have the will and desire. Right? Why? Because you want to. So now you can recognize world motivation. <laughs> because you want to they can touch that point in your heart of desire actually which was all made good one because remember when God created Genesis 1 after he created Adam and Eve he said everything was good but the devil defiled it all right because Eve was ignorant of the word so easily deceived if we know the word the truth then we won't be taken in already all right by the world trying to uh, uh, deceived for you to go after the things of the world to become rich. But what we can, we will still be rich if we know who is the one who makes us rich. Deuteronomy 8.18. It's God, right? He has the, you have the potential with the car inside. It is me who gives you the power to get wealth. So for the believers or the new creation or God's children, it's not that we will become poor. In fact, we will be more rich by God's way, not by man's way or devil's way of leaving God and going for the things of the world, right? But they all appeal to your desire because desire is greater than intellect. That's why you have the heart, spirit, soul, and body. God created a heart for us to love God, <laughs> desire after Him, after His word. That's why we worship, all right? So beautiful. Tomorrow, we, got, we have Abigail back already. <laughs> so we're going to have more worship. Wonderful. Come, come to the uh, physical meeting if you are in Malaysia. All right? So look at this example. So it doesn't matter, right? If you fail every class in school, and you, but if you can persevere, if you have will, right? The will. So from the desire, you can choose. That's why they call choose, choose, choose in the world. <laughs> I see to choose. Okay, choose what you desire, and you make the desire what something so desirous. Okay, that's how we also seen right men sin, women sin also in the uh, uh, in the moral area, because you want to. The power, the crown of desire is so potent that it has the ability to transcend and actually transform your intellect see the, the power here the crown okay of desire the crown or the power of desire so koa power crown castle from from the letter ka okay it's also the crown of the power behind desire it's greater than intellect okay now it can bring you up and surpass the intellect so that's why a person who is not uh, never go to school can also be can make a lot of money in this world can be very successful because they choose through their will and they want from their desire what has been shown to them as something worth going for okay so you see understand this in turn there's another concept that even transcends desire that is 
pleasure. <laughs> so you see the two things, desire and pleasure. What happened to it? <laughs> exactly these two things. Now we understand already, correct? From the letter, calf, and this explanation of this uh, Jewish rabbi. If okay, the other one is pleasure, Eden has the meaning of pleasure in the Hebrew letters, in the Hebrew meaning. Right? I think I showed you before, probably could be last week. Eden means pleasure. God actually wanted to give man pleasure. That's why he put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. As long as we don't go and take of the tree of fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil, and you keep partaking of the tree of life, which is the word of God, Jesus Christ, you will continue to have your pleasure. <laughs> your desire will be after God. And you will have the pleasure that result from feeding on God, receiving his blessings, his way. So if a person derives pleasure from something, he will automatically gravitate towards it. So I don't know what you like, right? Whether it's durian or ice cream or what, right? Uh, you ask Rachel, she will tell you everything that she likes. <laughs> okay, that she obtained pleasure from. Okay, so first you have desire, you taste before maybe, or you see it's beautiful. Okay, the last of the eyes is quite uh, is described. And then you want, you eat it. Wow, it tastes a little bit, oh, very nice. Oh. A little bit of success. Wow, very, very nice. Make you want to go further, further to go after it. All right. So there is now pleasure already. You and start to enjoy what you desired. But where is it leading? Okay, that is where the world don't tell you. <laughs> Only God tells you. Jesus said, What does it profit a man if you lose, if you gain the whole world? but lose your, your soul. See, that is the wisdom from God. If you don't know this, that's it. they don't know Jesus, they may have the whole world. They have all their desire, they have the pleasure, but they will die and go to hell. Right? Because they will lose their soul. And they waste their time on this earth. Because the time on this earth, as we go along from this letter car, <laughs> Is a revelation of eternity. If we spend this time with the crown of God's word, leading us in God's way, serving God, you will see what we will receive, what crowns we will receive in eternity. Okay, because this earth is just for temporary. As a result, he will mobilize his intellect and devise a strategy to attain it. That's why Kesa is represented by the letter K, 20 to teach us that there are two levels of faculties or faculties within the crown, desire and pleasure. So the world goes for the earthly crown, right? You say, oh, Miss, uh, Miss Universe Contest also got a crown. Other uh, businesses or whatever is also got crown one, <laughs> right? Why? Because like, that is like the ultimate, which is, Desire and pleasure. So now you got the crown means the, the two uh, levels. First is desire and the next is pleasure. So if you can maneuver your intellect to get your desire, you will get your pleasure. You will get the crown. <laughs> okay, understand? So now you won't be tricked. Okay, but don't forget you are no lesser than anyone because you have Jesus. Always remember Deuteronomy 8, 28 to 18, the Koat, okay? God gives you the power to get wealth, but this wealth will not come with stress. That's our Proverbs, right? The, the Lord makes us rich, but without toil, okay? It's a different type, okay? And with the crown, desire, and pleasure, each faculty contains 10 aspects. These aspects are also known as the 10 spheres, the 10 building blocks of creation. Three of the 10 levels reside in the dimension of the intellect, which is wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And seven occupy the dimension of the emotions, love, fear, mercy, victory, praise, victory, acknowledgement, foundation, bonding, and sovereignty. Okay, so these all form the, the spheres of the crown the aspects of the 10 that bring creation. So we, we need all this. 
wisdom, the intellect, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and so forth, the emotions. Okay, I won't go deeper into that, otherwise we cannot finish. The two faculties of the crown are, or car are pleasure and desire. Just remember, crown, pleasure, desire, pleasure. Okay, so the world teach you to go for it without Christ. But we already have it with Christ, right? With God. So put our desire correctly. That's why we need the Bible, the Word of God to, and the Holy Spirit to direct us to the right direction. All right, the Torah, God's Word to, in totality. That don't separate old and new. I see God's grace everywhere in the Word of God, right? From Genesis to Revelation. It's God's grace and God's goodness. Okay, but when the more you read, the more Holy Spirit and understanding of Hebrew letters, go read your Bible, you will see you'll be in awe of the God of the Jews. It's our God, right? Our same Father today. It states in the Talmud that the crown of Torah is law. What it's is what why is it specifically those things we shouldn't should or shouldn't do? And that is considered the crown of Torah. For the answer, so many will get of uh, it's the law, the crown of Torah. Oh, thou shalt not, thou shalt. And all of us got scared of it. Actually, there's nothing to be scared, especially now we are in Christ. Yeah, first we are saved by grace. Because it is the reason God gave us the Torah. We did not receive the Torah to have some nice stories to entertain ourselves, to read to our kids as a bedtime story or to analyze in a literature class. On the contrary, the purpose of Torah is that we carry out his laws or directions. That is that we fulfill God's desire and in doing so, give him pleasure. So beautiful. See the two words here? See, all our whole life is centered about around God. Do you always think, oh my God, you have to give me this, you have to give me that, you give me He will give you. But He created us for Himself. It's a joy to worship God. It's a joy to bring Him pleasure. Fulfilling God's desire. That's so why when you reach another level of worship, which is ministering to God, that's where we Words that just praise him, not about ourselves anymore. Yeah, he already saved us, okay? <laughs> Move from the outer court, the inner court, to the Holy of Holies, where you only see Jesus. That's where, if, you, if the one you is worthy of all uh, adoration or the King of Kings, do you go into the palace at the King of Kings and then tell him, thank you for, you know, uh, what you've done for me. <laughs> she will say, okay, 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 go, go, go. But you say, wow, King, you are so wonderful, <laughs> so glorious, you're, you're so beautiful. That's how we praise the King. <laughs> right? It's adoring Him already. That's why when we come into the Holy of Holies, into worship, is you are worthy, you are holy, and you forget about ourselves already, whether people look at us or whether we, we are blessed or you know, whether we are rich or poor, whatever. Forget all about self. This is bringing desire to someone, right? If you want to bring desire to someone, your family, your husband, your wife, or whatever, you go and praise that person, right? Abigail, you're so beautiful. Okay, I teach you, Elijah, how to praise her. <laughs> Abigail, my wife, you're so beautiful. You're looking more younger and younger. I am. <laughs> so bad. You, that's why she will knock your neck. Okay? But if you praise her like that, oh, she will do everything for you. Isn't that how we praise God? And it touches God's heart. That his children that he created and he blessed them are praising them are giving gifts, you know, you give to God. It's not to bribe him or twist his arm, but it's to, you know, to, to make him so happy that he pour out even more. <laughs> he pour out more and more for you. Open all the windows and heaven and say, wow, I'm so happy, you know. I just want to give more and more to this child. And in so doing what you give him, pleasure. So these two aspects of the crown, Desire and pleasure is actually the Torah, the purpose. God giving us all those instructions to fulfill his desire. Remember, the laws and all that, God's desire is that we, he's a zealous God. He doesn't want us to 
go and praise another god <laughs> which is you know not even god yeah that's why he calls zealous love you so much not the tainted corrupted jealousy but the one that i want you for myself oh without any selfish insight selfishness inside to fulfill god's system that's why we say the reason i live is to worship you the reason i am alive here is to bring pleasure to god <laughs> to fulfill his desire of dwelling with men you've been reading all the uh, learning the letters right it's god from the beginning god wants to dwell amongst men and what does that do for god he's happy that's why god come in the eve in the evening to fellowship with adam and eve before he disobeyed god fellowship is what to he's happy you don't fellowship with someone you don't like right <laughs> that one right but if it's someone you like you talk very long one <laughs> that's why we, when we meet together we cannot stop right so it brings pleasure to each person it brings pleasure to god when you set that devotion time or you you know uh, a certain time that we come to read his word to to worship him you know as we have physical meeting that desire is not only ours it was god given us to bring pleasure to him hallelujah this one can go on and on right to live for god means this to live for jesus is not to like i have to die to myself all the time and to live in sadness because i have to give this up or to give that up no it is a wonderful fellowship with him that he's smiling at you and daddy god is laughing that's why in offerings and tidings right is paul says what right give with a joyful heart hilarious <laughs> because god loves a cheerful giver he enjoys it god loves so do you want to bring pleasure to god ah that's actually when he take our whole life and show us how wonderful he is great is the study of torah for it brings us to action so the the word so-called law or instructions and all that is not lawful right it's for us to understand it and then bring pleasure to god's heart by the actions that we take right it's just like if you're a child right and you say you love mommy or not say yes and then wow, on your birthday or whatever she go and bake a cake for you or buy something for you get something brings pleasure to your heart that, that's action already action from the love it doesn't say, oh, i love you huh? but never do anything <laughs> okay so again huh? because we got this wonderful couple here so i like to teach them right <laughs> so when i tell you when you say you love abigail make sure you bring something for her okay all right so like the crown <laughs> Torah's ultimate purpose is to go beyond the head, ah, beyond the intellect, and propel us to act in accordance with God's will, and thus refining us as people and completing God's purpose in creation. What was God's purpose? Right, to enjoy man, to have a family, right? Sai Su Xian, Xiao Ling, you know, they all got born again, and there are many more that God will add right into this family his family in this ministry right to bring to completion god's purpose in creation to dwell amongst men so beautiful it's beyond the intellect okay all right so now calm as crown so what are we living in this life for why we serve the lord because in the next number of physical years will pass very fast what is eternity waiting for us is the eternal rewards which are rewards of crown so you understand crown already the world will say the highest level is crown something like that right the crown of the beauty queen and the crown of success and all that at the end is crown okay they'll give you a crown but it will temporarily even the crown of the beauty queen can only wear for one year <laughs> After next year they have to give it up to the next next person and the crown is made up of tangible material metal i don't know whether it's gold or not right but eventually it will also decay belongs to this world but we have a crown that lasts for eternity and these are five crowns that are named in the new testament okay for different things that we do as god's children out of love huh? not by four Okay, behold, Revelations 
uh, let me can put this bigger. 311, I come quickly, hold fast that which you have, that no man take your crown. <laughs> this one God wants to give every, a crown for each person. Hold on to what, what this crown will give for what? And you have many crowns better lah, forever, for eternity. So you have, don't let people take it. Okay, so you say, go, go and uh, preach and save soul. You don't say, ah, yeah, you go, lah, never mind, lah, you take my crown. Hey, go, lah. <laughs> go for opportunity, go and save soul. That is your crown. Don't give to another one. Another other person will come and snatch it. Okay, crown of life, all right, which is uh, in James, for those who have suffered for his sake, okay, those martyrs, all right, and those who endure persecution persecution you have a special crown called crown of life crown of glory for those who feed the flock ah pastors all right uh whether cell group leader pastors or whatever all right who, who take care of or feed feed give food okay teach and feed them feed includes taking care shepherding all right the flock sheep right you have crown of glory crown of rejoicing for those who win souls yeah Oh, don't let anyone take that crown. Okay, go win souls. That's the easiest one. <laughs> okay, just win soul. Go win. No, it's not convert souls. Win them. Win them with the love of Jesus. All right, in your heart, and you have a crown of rejoicing. That's why when someone comes to know Jesus, Su Xin or uh, Xiao Ling. All right, and even we all in the past, what happened? The Bible says what. Right? The whole heaven rejoice. It's a crown of rejoicing. Okay? I don't want you all to miss that crown. Okay? That's why I push sometimes all right, for you all to go out and save souls. Because at the end, you will get this crown. Crown of righteousness for those who love is appearing of the rapture. Crown of, uh, I will explain a little bit more. Because these are so beautiful, eternal one. Okay? A crown of incorruptible crown, those who press on steadfastly. Okay, you don't give up the faith. Don't I oh, just got a little bit of try. You say, I don't want Jesus really. I wear hard. Lah. No. Press on. Overcomers. Okay. Go on. Press on as in in his strength. Keep on believing that God will do what he said, that God is in charge. Especially after we're learning the Hebrew letters. Definitely God is in charge, right? So you have the keter ha Kain in Hebrew, which is the crown of life. James 1.12, awarded for enduring the trials and tribulations of uh, this world. Kida ha, ha, ha zidaka, the crown of righteousness given to those who anticipate the coming of our Lord by living righteous lives before him. So we, today, we not try to be good or try to live righteous. We just live out what God has already given to us. All right, The righteousness of God. We have been inside us, we have a new seed, a new nature that got born again, like sushi. Right? In a physical, you have to have a seed to be born. Same, you were born of the seed of God. Right? The Bible states there's a verse there, right? And you were gone, born receiving his righteousness, his right standing. Your sins are all forgiven today. You stand right before God because of Jesus. And when we continue on waiting for Jesus, to come, which is coming soon, second coming, you will receive the crown of righteousness. This one is just continue to live righteous according to our new nature. Kita Olam, an incorruptible crown, a picture of eternal life. All right? Every one of us will have that crown. Okay? Eternal life. Kita Hal Tifirat, the crown of glory. 1 Peter 5, 4, given to those who faithfully shepherd God's people. Ah, why not go for all the crowns, okay? Crown of rejoicing, just now we said already, right? It's also the crown of our winning souls and it is, uh, what is our hope? Also the presence of our Lord Jesus at his coming. There's something to rejoice about, okay? For your glory, when we, his, uh, this one, how, how, you, how you bring to, if you read 1 Thessalonians 2, before 19 and 20, where Paul declared, what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you? Oh, sorry, yeah, correct. This is the correct one. It's not even you. That means he's saying, they are rejoicing. It's these people that Paul and the apostles have won to the Lord. They are 
he's rejoicing, right? Is it not even you talking to the church in Thessal Thessal uh, Thessalonia in the presence of our Lord Jesus? So when you save souls, all right, you bring souls to the Lord, and then Jesus appears, it's so beautiful. You, you are eager for Jesus to appear because these, these are souls that you have won for him. And everyone rejoice together. You receive that crown of rejoicing that these souls are safe for the Lord, right? For you are our glory. And this is not about Jesus. The you here is the people. The people that Paul has brought to the Lord, has saved, led to the, to the Lord, right? So all of you go for all the crowns, right? Then there is one crown, Kita Hakotzim, which is the crown of thorns. Uh, this one, only one person can wear this crown. This is the crown that only Yeshua, Jesus, is worthy to wear as our great high priest who offered himself up for our sins. Jesus wore the crown of thorns at the cross, right? They made a crown of thorns, poke right into his head. Of suffering, of sin, all the thorns. Thorns are horrible, right? For us. So that we today can receive all these five crowns. If Jesus didn't wear the crown of thorns, we won't have these five crowns to wear in heaven, right? So beautiful, right? So we love him and want to bring pleasure to our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who possesses all the crowns of Israel and the church. So just now we name the crowns of Israel and then the crowns of the church. Okay? As Malek, Malek means king. Hayidwim, he wears the crown of the kingdom. Right? He's going to come again very soon, very, very soon, less than 10 years, to and sit in Israel again. Our eyes will see him in the temple in Jerusalem, and they will see him as the king of the kingdom. All right, and he will then wear the crown. As Kohen Hagadol, he wears the crown of the priesthood. See, he they, they will recognize Jesus as the Messiah, as the King of Kings. That's Diva Elohim, he wears the crown of Torah. Oh, this time, second coming will not be like first coming, right? All these crowns, he will be on Jesus Christ when he sits in the throne in, in the temple. As Ben Elon, Elon, he wears the crown of the good name. As Sar Hayim, he wears the crown of life. As the Zadik, after the order of Melchizedek, he, crown, he wears the crown of righteousness. Yeah, are you excited that this is who we worship? <laughs> well, he is the king, all right? Not no ordinary person as our Lord and Savior. As Havod, he wears the incorruptible crown. Right? Melchizedek is the crown of righteousness. As Adon ha Kavod, he wears the crown of glory, and so on. Indeed, there's a hymn that says, crown him with many crowns, and it's also in Revelations. And so our King of Kings will be many, many crowns because he. He is the only one who actually deserved it. He came and died for us. He obeyed the Father to come and die for humankind. And he earned the respect of all heaven and all earth. Had to bow down. Crown him with many crowns. Ka and resembling King Messiah. Beautiful letter, this alphabet, right? Grammatically, when prefixed, prefixed to a word ka, it means like. So we put the word king to ka is like a king. So for example, we prefer ka to Malak king to obtain Kamalak like a king. So now the letter ka represents the letter bet, which we understand to be a picture of Messiah uh, Jesus. So when we prefix ourselves to the Lord Jesus, we will be conformed to his image and resemble him just as ka re resembles bet. Okay? We are like Jesus when we join the two letters together. Okay? He comes our king, we join to him as like a bride and bridegroom and the crown. And since calf pictures the palm of the hand, we will moreover resemble Jesus in our work. Yeah, because hands speak of work, right? So how do we work? 
we will look like Jesus. When we do work, we work with integrity, we work with confidence and faith, we work with uh, gratitude to our Lord Jesus and work with the understanding that we have the power to get well <laughs> by God's power, not our own wisdom, all right? With the crown of the Torah, we're following God's ways, God's instructions in given to us. So beautiful. Furthermore, when following a car, a word calf indicates possession. For example, we append calf to Malek to obtain Malekha, your king. So now, since calf depicts the crown of a prostrated person, we can see that when we follow Jesus, by bending or kafat our wills in submission to him, we'll be, we will be given the reward of the crown of righteousness since our works will follow him. See, it also, the crown is now prostrated king. So we bend down. All right, it speaks of bending also, humility. All right, bending down to God's ways, God's word, humility to honor Him and submit to Him. Then we possess the blessings of the crown, our will. We bend our will down. Say, Lord, Jesus also bent His will to God's will, right? He said, Not my will, but thine be done to God's will. So we, we have a choice, right? The will is a free choice. We choose to obey God. We choose now to follow Him. Okay, because He has already given all us all the ability to do it. It's now the choice only, our will, where we humble ourselves and submit. So learning all the ways of God in the Bible, we follow Bible ways, follow God's way to possess our inheritance. The latter calf rejoice in completion, redemption, and transformation. Okay, so that is complete. God already complete everything. That's why there is the crown at the end. Finish already. Seated Jesus. Is, and he redeemed us, redeem, redeeming us, dying on the cross. Our redemption is complete. And now when we uh, join ourselves with Jesus, like the Kala and the bride and the groom married to him, we have the power to make well, produce well. That is the power of transformation. Just like the Chameleon, uh, is it called chame cha chameleon? <laughs> that lizard. Okay, so we can transform. Power, calf, all right, speaks of open one, the blessing of God open to us through redemption and completed work. And then the 210, 10 speaks of completion, number 20 now. Now we can receive all the blessings as we humble ourselves and submit ourselves to the will of God in the Torah and whatever God wants us to do without. Uh, with free will, we will be transformed. Just like, all right, we have the power of transformation. It's the totality of space and other aspects. It's so much, right? So I'm trying to give you a lot. <laughs> so go through again, okay? Uh, of space surrounding the earth. The intriguing gap on the left speaks of the three heavens. It's another revelation again. So there's a lot inside here. If today you don't get it all, don't worry. It's not very possible to get it all. You need to listen again. Okay, because I'm really listening for a lot, plus the Holy Spirit. Three heavens, the sky, the outer space, and there are three heavens listed in the Bible. So you have the first heaven is the sky that we see up there, okay, behind everyone. Uh, the rest also can get uh, use this uh, uh, virtual background, okay, because the window is the hay or the dale. We're going to, from the natural realm, the, our, I'm talking about the, our uh, virtual uh, background. <laughs> From the natural realm, we are going to look into the spiritual outside the heavens. So you see the sky, right? So the sky is the first heaven. It's in the Bible, right? Okay, Second Corinthians 12, 2. Then you have the outer space. And then you have the third heaven. So the outer space is where the astronaut go up, you know, to space, the spaceship go. So you see uh, uh, the place called, that's what we call outer space. Uh, Elsa come from outer space. <laughs> She's not here. Okay, never mind. Tomorrow she will be here. Okay, tomorrow do come. Huh? You'll meet our Elsa from outer space. Actually, I'm thankful to her. She helped us create the whole thing, right? The website and all the multimedia thing. And now we have the, the, the rest of you who are uh, following up with it, doing a wonderful job. Thank you and praise the Lord. Then you have the third heaven. That's where Paul got caught up in the spirit, okay, in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 12, 2. That is the dwelling place of God and his angels. Oh, so exciting, right? 
don't see just this world only, okay? There is a whole new wonderful world of God, universe that God created. And that's where we are going to go, right? When the rapture comes and the, uh, if, if we leave this world, all right? But we will have long life. So all of us will live until rapture, Jesus comes. It is the highest heaven. So there are some scriptures there. You can re refer to it. I already checked through. Hebrews 4.14, see, seeing then, so that's where the third heaven in 2 Corinthians uh, 2.12, where Paul talks about God took him to the third heavens and showed him things that he cannot even utter. He don't know how to describe this third heaven, okay, where God dwells. And that's where they're going to go there, where he sits on the throne, okay? And that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Access to heaven is redeemed and enter, uh, enter into God's presence. So now we can enter into God's presence because in our sin, we cannot go there. All right? Whether on this earth, before Jesus died, before uh, the Jews cannot even touch the Ark of the Covenant, they will die because of the holiness of God. But today, because of Jesus, the grace of God, so wonderful, right? The day will come when we all can, even the physical heaven, where we can see the third heaven, but today in our hearts, you already have heaven inside here, inside our heart, where God dwells. Isn't it? God dwells in heaven, God dwells in our hearts. Jesus dwells there. That's why you have peace there in the heart. No matter what this world is happening, you have peace. And then with this peace, yes, you learn more, you can transcend and move and transform situations around us. The joy of prayer, but we still pray. Okay, energy within this letter is complete redemption and transformation. So this letter car, okay, will, will have bring out the, the energy of completion, redemption, and transformation. When you understand more, involves the word keter or crown. David escaped into the cave of Abdullam. There were four hundred men with him. They were all distressed. They were in. Uh, dead, they were depressed, okay? So David was running away from Saul in the cave at the Lum, and on the run. Can you imagine a fugitive running for us? If you've never experienced it, running from Along, running from, you know, it's a horrible thing to experience where you have to hide. You have committed something or not committed something, but you have to hide from people who wants to harm you, okay? This is the experience. Imagine what David went through. And all these men also, they were in debt. That means they got alone running after them also. If you never experienced, you don't know what it is. Okay? Bring my soul out of prison. And in this Psalms 142, 7, it was written where he was in the cave with all these men. Can you imagine these men? And they later became mighty men. <laughs> so whatever situation we were in before, okay, this is what the calf can do for us. When we praise the Lord, okay, and the righteous, okay, listen here, the righteous shall surround me. So in the midst of all these problems and problem people who came to David, he himself also got a problem because he was running away from someone who would kill him. You shall deal bountifully with me. See, he still trusts God. For us, most people will collapse and say, don't know where are you, God. Huh? <laughs> okay, David didn't collapse. But in the situation, he said, the righteous shall surround me. But actually what was surrounding him in the natural would be fear and all those people who are got a lot of problems. And what is the meaning of the word surround? He said, the righteous shall surround me. The word surround, translated into English as surround, is actually kata, which is the crown. Okay? to enclose or to crown around me. Psalms 142 was written in the cave. David wrote a different perspective. So if we don't understand the story and we just read this verse by itself, we don't know that actually he was, he was in that situation of despair, of lost hope, you know, people all depressed also around him. But by reading this, we don't, and we don't know. This one is I tell you the story. If you don't know the story, you just read this verse. It looks like, okay, uh, I will praise your name. <laughs> okay. But 
the righteous shall crown themselves with me. That's why in the midst of whatever situation in the world, the physical world that looks bad or what, we keep on declaring God's word. All right? You declare who God is. Okay, no worries, uh, uh, Su, Su Shin. All right, we'll see you tomorrow, okay? And you can continue. Uh, uh, it's going to finish anyway uh, in a short while. This is the last few slides already, all right? But I would love to see you tomorrow, okay? Either Zoom or physical would be better. <laughs> the righteous shall crown themselves with me. In David's prophetic eye, the cave scene is transformed. The day will come when we are complete with redemption of a new body. Our position in the eternal future is decided here and now. Every situation is more meaningful than we can imagine. So today, we have prophetic eyes, okay? Our spirit man, see, and you only can see if you have God's word. <laughs> okay, because we, the physical world see the physical things. Your spiritual world can only see through the, the map that is written in God's word. The roadmap, whatever God's word. So if you don't have the direction, the Torah and what that, you see the natural world, all the natural problems. Okay, but because David communicate with God, right? And he has the Torah with him. He see the future. He see God's crown, crowning him, okay? And around, surrounding him. The righteous are around him, the crown of Jesus. One of the meanings of the letter calf is spoon. The, right, the root for the word spoon is kapha or to bend. And the calf is a letter that is bent. You can see that. It represents the aspect of submitting oneself to a greater power. Our God, right? To bend oneself, to submit to the crown king. The God, the ruler of the universe. So when you summarize, or you know, there's a lot inside here. If you get more and more the revelation, your life totally more and more transformed. Remember this calf is completion. Redemption, transformation. Think of the way through, the way through into the heavenly realm, into the spiritual supernatural realm. Access into the heavenly things of God is already one through Jesus. Okay, the calf. Think of submission to the king of kings. Ben, right? Also, it's a, it's a king that is uh, bent, uh, lying down. So when the king, the crown is like that, right? When you lie down, the crown becomes like that. Understand? Think of the crown of life. Think of the extraordinary significance of seemingly extraordinary events in our lives. Don't just say, okay, I've got all this, you know, go to work, I've got problem, I go family, got problem. Don't see, it looks like, you know, all these problems are going to, uh, uh, everything, you, you have to endure this. No, how you endure this and how you overcome this will determine your crown in eternity, in heaven. So they are not just like normal nothing. God allow us to go through this so-called normal life of going to work, going through traffic jam, all that for a purpose, right? Develop patience, right? Give us opportunity to witness to others, be the light of this world. And at the end, to receive the crown. Five crowns, huh? Come, I'll, I'll read, I will summarize or go uh, very fast through the Psalms on one night. Okay, now that you have more understanding of calf, Psalms on one night just says, I'm homesick <laughs> in a message version. All right, longing for your salvation. I'm waiting for your word of hope. If you don't catch it later, the last next slide I will explain to you. My eyes, this is uh, the, uh, the eight verses actually is King David's revelation of the letter alphabet calf. So if you don't, if I didn't explain to you, I think you, you probably not see anything here because I look at it, it also have, what is it? God's word, all right? My eyes grew heavy watching for some sign of your promise. How long must I wait for your comfort? There's smoke in my eyes. They burn the water and water, but I keep a steady gaze on the instructions you post. <laughs> I, I like this message. When suddenly I saw the word post there, you know? you, you Everyone, Facebook, 
khaki here, right? <laughs> so you go and watch what who people post what. Ah, a lot of stalkers here some more. <laughs> okay, why don't we make put a steady gaze on the instructions that God posts in the Bible? Keep your eye, be more observant. Okay, Joshua 1, verse 8. All right, what is it? Hmm. Oh, I forgot already. <laughs> this book of the law or the Torah of God's instructions shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do. So you don't even observe anything. What's happening in the verse? <laughs> there is action. Remember just now? There are actions. Sometimes God speaks in the word. We take the action. Observe carefully the instruction given there. Okay, there are sometimes love words God tell you, yes, he loves you. Okay, settle, be settled with that already. God loves you. Don't doubt it anymore. And then there are instructions there. For what? For a benefit to give joy and pleasure to the Lord and for us to be blessed. Also, the calf has an open hand to bless us. Also, open a section there. Okay, keep your gaze on the instructions that God posts <laughs> in the Bible. Okay, how long do I have to put up with all this? How long do I? Okay, that is David actually going through those uh, situations. But what he is saying here, the arrogant, godless, try to throw me off track. See, that is the world wisdom. There, remember, Keta Keta, right? Speaks of uh, the 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 uh, palm of God, the blessing of God through His word. But the world will try to take you away or rather the devil okay, by going to look at the, the, the postings outside. <laughs> okay. All the desire, all the temptations there okay, ah, that take you away from the instructions that God posts. This is the calf. There are blessings inside the word, the, the word of God, the palm, the go for this, right? Go for this with all your heart. This is what God's blessings are. Okay, the power to get wealth is in his word. Don't go off track. Ignorant as they are of God and his ways. Don't be ignorant of God's word and God's ways. Okay, everything you command is a sure thing, but they harass me with lies. They is the, the enemies. Okay, the devil give you lies. God's word is the sure one. Remember the palm, right? It's the blessings of God through his word. Through his redemption, Jesus' completion, redemption, and transformation, and the crown. So the world will say, Ayah, you don't know what's after life. Ah. You know, just live now first. Okay. But today we there's a lie of the devil. We live, we are eternal spirits. We live for eternity. What is our purpose in life? To bring joy and glory, uh, 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 pleasure and delight to our Lord Jesus. And then Ah, we got rewards, okay? Crowns, just now you saw. And who is the king of kings who wore the crown of thorns? Jesus Christ. So don't, don't be harassed by lies. They push and push. They never let up. But I haven't relaxed my grip on your counsel. Who push and push? The world. <laughs> the world. Push you, push you. Which is actually the devil, right? True, looks everything fine. Okay? But what did David say? In the calf, calf, I hold on to the palm of God, to the divine hand of God, to the counsel of God. I will not let go. Okay? Because that is our, our will, our choice. God, don't force us. Don't, don't force you to read his Bible or, you know, to study his word. But when we more and more realize, right, there are so two different wisdom. One is just lies taking us away, right? But what we have... It's the crown, the everlasting crown. In your great love, revive me so that I can alertly <laughs> be alert, be awake, obey your every word. How beautiful the psalm is. No wonder God calls King David a man after my own heart. And what is in God's heart? Right? He already showed us his heart. He said, God, I don't know what's in your heart, lah. <laughs> ah, he said, I already showed you. It is for those who will seek me in the word. It's given in the Torah. That's God's heart. Just now showed you already the pleasure, the delight. That's God's heart. But we won't discover it if we don't 
go and find God's word, right? And then it's a joy to obey his word. Okay, last slide. This is calf. Okay, Psalms 119, verse 18. So in the first one, you have the Gamatra 20. It also talks about uh, in this picture, right? The open palm of God, right? Uh, of our hands as well to bless people. Okay, and to work to have to, uh, the, to bring in the to bring out the potential to get wealth. Psalms 119. My soul languish for your salvation. Our true salvation is found in Yeshua, Jesus. All right, our blessings, everything is in Christ. And how do we wish that? It's the counsel of God from God's word. Okay. Then, see, when you see God's word, see the crown. See heaven open, all right? And God's open hand, open palm to bless us. Now we already have access to heaven. The door to heaven is open or to the spiritual realm, to God's realm. See the reward as well, the crown. Don't live just like, you know, ignorant of what is awaiting us. It's so excited, you know, exciting to live the life from his word, right? Following in obedience. And ultimately, so now on this earth, we have God's word to live that heavenly, wonderful life on earth, pleasing our, bringing delight and joy to our heavenly father. And eventually, when we reach heaven, woo, will, this is the thing that will happen, <laughs> right? We have Jesus putting the crowns on us. So I don't know how it works, actually, you know, but people have drawn up like that, lah. Because if you have more than one crown, I don't know whether you keep it or what. <laughs> you know, or one day wear one crown. Okay, so, but God knows what to do, right? It's, it, uh, it will be there waiting for us. This is one beautiful picture. I believe everyone should have at least one crown and then the rest that you learn, go for more crowns. All right, but Jesus is the one who already able to wear or, or earn the right to wear all the crowns. And he shared all these crowns with us so for eternity. I know we have a joke among Christians, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you go heaven. I know you didn't do anything because your head got no crown. <laughs> but you're still walking around in heaven. No, like it's a joke, okay? It's not meant to condemn you or what, okay? But just to realize that we are not living this life just here, okay? This is what awaits us, the crowns. And it comes from... The, the Jews have the understanding of this because they understand this Hebrew letter, Ka, which we don't know. But today we know already, okay? So go for the crowns. Live that life which is already given ability. The power is already given to us to create and bring pleasure to our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Go into his word, our hope, and everything is in his word, not man's word. If man's word don't tally with God's word, chuck it us out. It's not from God, right? Take God's word. And God's word is always the calf to bless us, yeah. right? To put the crown on us, to instruct us in the way of righteousness and holiness, in the way of blessing. Amen. Okay. That's it for today. <laughs> so I believe that you are all blessed, okay? And looking, enjoying this spiritual life on this earth as we keep on learning the Hebrew letters, may this word calf, right, be really uh, affix our prefix our life to the King of Kings, all right, to the calf, and live like a king with humbling ourselves, all right, but knowing that God loves us and has given us authority, power, koak, okay, koak. Remember a few words from calf, koak, Peter, kala, the bride, and the groom, yeah with Jesus Christ, and we live that life that he wants us to live, free of worries, free of fear, and waiting for, and comes from where? From his word. Salvation, there's so much in salvation. Tomorrow, we will learn more about it. Okay, so uh, praise the Lord. God bless everyone. And Elisha, see you tomorrow. Sarah, good that you come in. Uh, Xiao Ling, yeah. So tomorrow, pray for you all more and minister to you all, okay? Uh, don't, don't miss, yeah? Tomorrow will be a wonderful uh, physical meeting as well. 
So maybe let's ask uh, uh, Elijah. Elijah, does the closest in prayer? Okay. Uh, Lord, thank you for this gathering here that we come to learn your word through the Hebrew letters that you have given us the letter calf. It is meant that we have the crown. It's a sign of a crown on our head that we go ahead to desire the crown. Desire what we want in your word so that we have many, many crowns. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Everyone say amen, amen. Huh? because he said the last part is so that we can have many crowns. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> don't say amen. You only got one crown. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. I'll uh, see y'all tomorrow, right? In Zoom. All right. For those of you who are in Singapore, and then uh, those of you out here, see you at those residents tomorrow for a wonderful time with the Lord and His presence and anointing. Okay, to flow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye, Farah, and everyone else.